not all 5G is created the same, and the carriers are reporting it differently on your device. So let's have a quick recap on what those flavors of 5G are and how to know what you're connecting to. Hi there, I'm Cherie with the Mobile Internet Resource Center, and we have been tracking 5G since it was just on the radar. And unlike past evolutions of cellular internet connectivity, 5G introduces some new complications because there's more than one type of it, and it's getting a little confusing with how the carriers are presenting it. So as a quick recap, there are three flavors of 5G, and they're best described as a layer cake. In fact, T-Mobile has used that as a way to explain how 5G is working. So at the base level, we have low band spectrum, and these are the same frequency bands that we have been using for LTE for the past decade. These are longer range bands. They can spread many, many miles away from a cellular tower. Think 10, 15, even 20 miles away from a cellular tower. Now, the downside of being able to spread a signal that far is they can't carry as much capacity or speed with them, so you're gonna get the slower speeds yet now. We've all gotten used with LTE being pretty fast speeds. You're getting 20, 30, 60, even 100 or 200 megabit per second speeds on LTE these days, and that's going to be the experience with this low band 5G. It's gonna be like really, good 4G or LTE. And you might get slightly higher speeds in some places, but that's about what you can expect with this low band spectrum. Now at the top of the layer cake, we've got what you might refer to as millimeter wave, sometimes abbreviated MMW, and the carriers all are all calling it different sorts of things like ultra wide band or just super fast speeds. This is kind of what people fixated on when they first heard about 5G. That's gonna be the super fast new evolutionary speeds that are out there. Now, with this band, these are super, super high bands, and they can only be spread a short distance. Think in terms of blocks or the size of a stadium. They're not going to be things that go over neighborhoods or go across, you know, miles. These are gonna be rarely short range, but because they are short range, they can carry super, super fast speeds. This is where you're gonna hear about those gigabits per second speeds, the super fast speeds that you're seeing out there. But you're only gonna see these sorts of speeds and this sort of coverage in core urban areas, in stadiums, airports, maybe shopping centers, where they're being deployed to handle a lot of capacity for a lot of people in a small amount of space. The sweet spot, and this is where 5G is really gonna shine once it's really fully deployed out there, is this mid-band spectrum. And this is frequency bands that are not that super, super fast short range, but not that slower long range. The sweet spot, right in the middle. You're gonna have bands that can propagate out maybe a couple miles from a cell tower. And those speeds are going to be in the hundreds of megabits per second. So you're talking 300, 400, 500 megabit per second, maybe higher. So it's that sweet spot between being able to distribute a cellular signal further away and still getting the benefits of those super fast speeds. Now the carriers are all approaching how they're deploying their 5G rollouts in different ways. Verizon is really focusing on that ultra wideband, that millimeter wave. T-Mobile on the other hand has been focusing more on their long range and their mid band based upon the spectrum that they already held. But all three of them in the years ahead are gonna converge and be able to have coverage that goes across the entire layer cake. So all the carriers now, and with the newest release of iOS 15, T-Mobile is joining the other carriers and having their own indicator on the top of your phone or your device that will tell you what type, when you are on the higher range uh, frequency bands, the mid band and the ultra wide band millimeter wave. So what each of the carriers and how they're going to present it on your device varies differently. So you're going to have to pay attention, especially if you have a device that can do multiple carriers, you're going to see it displayed differently. With Verizon, they currently have a lot of millimeter wave coverage out there and they will display that as 5G UW on your device. So 5G ultra wide band. As they deploy out their mid-band, they'll probably include that mid-band as being considered ultra-wideband, so they'll probably be grouped in. It's not known yet, but that's what our suspicion is. 
So if you see 5G ultra wideband, that means you're getting their super fast frequency bands. And right now that just means the millimeter wave. Now, if you see 5G with Verizon, that is their long range being deployed over right now using dynamic spectrum sharing over their LTE frequency bands. And that's just going to be really good LTE. And in fact, if you turn off your 5G, you may actually get faster speeds going back to LTE. With AT&T, they actually have three different indicators. If you see 5G+, plus, that's their millimeter wave um, areas of, of coverage. And as they get mid-band, they too will likely group in their mid-band spectrum in with that 5G plus indicator. 5G is their long range, low band 5G coverage, which would be really good LTE. And they have another one out there, 5G E. They actually use this to indicate advanced LTE. It's not 5G at all, it's their evolution towards 5G. So even if you have an LTE only device, you'll see that 5G on there and think, oh, wow, I have a 5G device, but you don't, you're not getting 5G signal. You're just getting really good LTE. Now, T-Mobile joining in on this uh, right now and devices going forward, will start to show this. They're going to be using 5G UC, which are using to stand for ultra capacity, and that will indicate their millimeter wave, which they don't have a lot of right now, but their mid-band spectrum, which they do have a lot of based upon their band 41 acquisition that they bought Sprint for. So they've been deploying a lot in that band 41, which is mid-band spectrum, getting you that sweet spot of speed and range. Their 5G indicator, we'll just say 5G, and that's their low band. And they are leading the race in that low band uh, 5G out there because of their holdings with band 71. They held out a lot of capacity when they bought that for 5G to be specific for that. So that's the indicators that you will see on each of the carriers. And you will see these on your smartphones. You'll see them on your hotspot devices, your routers. And that's how you can tell if you are on super fast 5G or on that long range 5G when you are using your device to connect to 5G. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.